Continuing our series on most important financial decisions by decade, I'm talking to you in your 30s. That and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, we're in a little mini series about the most important financial priorities and biggest things that you need to attend to in your finances by decade, all right? There's different themes and they build on each other. So if you didn't catch the previous video on your 20s, we're gonna build on those. So the idea of making sure that you're doing a budget, that you've got an emergency fund built up and you don't have any consumer debt and that you're saving a lot or as much as you can towards retirement, those are still important. Those are still important. But in your 30s, how do you do those things and more and what else becomes just as important or a big financial priority? In your 30s, you're still in the habit forming stage. And when you look at all of the big financial transitions that you're going to go through in your life, we've debated this before on our on our talk show that airs every Saturday at 10 a.m. on this channel uh, with my co-host. I think this stage when you're starting your, like when you're in your 30s, you're starting your career, you're likely starting a family, you're getting married, you're starting a family, like you've got all of those transitions going on. You might be buying your first house, probably upgrading from the college vehicle and, and getting more established. Like to me, this is one of the most difficult financial stages or seasons of your life because you're, you know, if, if phrases these days, you're adulting, right? So you're, you're buying a bigger house. That's a big commitment, that's a big decision. You're wanting to get nicer vehicles, maybe a bigger vehicle. I know when we bought our very first like real car was right when my wife and I, a couple years after we got married, when we found out we were pregnant. Oh my goodness, now it's safe car is important and we need a bigger one so it can haul all the you know baby crap around. And so like you're making some big decisions that actually are not permanent, but they're longer term. And while you're still dealing with maybe mistakes you made in your 20s or the lifestyle that you had in your 20s or when you were single, you maybe are still dealing with student loan debt and some other things. And so you're starting to have a little bit of financial history and you're starting to get some really, really big financial decisions. It's challenging. So what, in addition to the, to the ones mentioned uh, in the previous video uh, in your 20s, what are the three biggest financial priorities when you're in your 30s? I've already alluded to the first one, but that is be careful and cautious with the amount of debt you have in your life. And I'm not talking about consumer debt, credit cards, student loans, although, yeah, that's what I mentioned last time. So it is, it is it, it valid, it's important. No, 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 I'm talking about the house that you buy, the vehicles that you purchase, some of the other decisions that you make that ultimately you're at a spot when you're in your 30s, likely, and, and not everyone's on the same path. So just in, in generalities. You're making decisions that are needs, but they're infused with some wants as well. So I need an independent separate place to live and I, I don't want to rent, okay? And financially that may not make sense. So I need that, but I want a certain neighborhood and I want certain features and square footage and all that sort of stuff. And I get it, I get it. I've been there, I'm there right now, right? I'm not in my thirties anymore, but I get that balance. And the more features and, and, and so on is going to influence what the cost is and how much debt you have in your life. Same thing with vehicles when you're buying, a, and that's actually much more clear with vehicles as we can see it these days, that yeah, a baseline vehicle has increased in price significantly, but you might say is still fairly affordable. But listen, if you want the right or the nice, you know, in, in, info, uh, info, Entertainment system, I can't, what, what, you know, the right dashboard and all the connections and, and the right tires, the right features, all that sort of stuff, then you're really pricing yourself up there. Homes and vehicles have really been pushing the limits on affordability. And when you're in your 30s, you've seen your income grow, but it's still a lot of income potential to come in the future. So the question is, and really this is why it's the number one priority, in my opinion, when you're in, in your 30s, is you've got to have the right balancing act so that too much, so that you ensure that there's balance in your financial life, so that you don't commit too much of your monthly and ongoing finances to those big expenses and debts, meaning you don't have as much to go towards the other things that you are or should be prioritizing financially. Because listen, at that time, you're still gonna do the vacations. Will Will those expenses, a vehicle, house, those sorts of things, will it crowd out your ability 
to save up as much for your future, for kids college, for your future, for your retirement, those sorts of things. So you've got to be careful and cautious with how much debt, long-term debt you invite into your life. The second big financial priority that starts in your 30s, different than your 20s, is you've got to ha start having your taxes, your tax planning, informing your financial decisions. In, in your 20s or when you're just getting started, you, there's this evolution of taxes. What in the world? What a ripoff or how much and all of that. And then you go through this phase of, I want to pay as little as possible. And then as your income grows, that's when you need to start looking at, well, what are the proactive tax decisions that I can make, tax opportunities that are available to me to pay the least amount of tax over my lifetime. And sometimes that means paying a little bit more tax today so that you avoid it in the future. And other times it means paying less tax today and being aware of what the tax consequence of that will be out there in the future. When you're getting married, and again, this isn't everyone's path, but if it's yours, if when you're getting married, starting to have kids, all of a sudden you've got different tax brackets, you've got different tax credits and, and, and changes there. And so you need to be aware of that and those changes and what opportunities exist out there in your tax picture to do some, to be opportunistic and, and do some creative tax planning. This might be the time, while I certainly would have suggested in your 20s to be considering a Roth because you're so young, maybe this is a time to do pre-tax to get yourself your income below certain thresholds. Maybe it is to continue doing a Roth or start doing a Roth. Maybe it's to do a Roth conversion if you've all of a sudden got a bunch of kids and, and, and you've got a bunch of tax credit. So, but essentially at this stage, you need to be really mindful if you're not already of your uh, of, of some of the tax planning opportun opportunities that should, in, that should influence the rest of your financial decisions. And then the third big financial priority in this stage in your 30s, again, this is, again, not everyone's path, but this is likely when you need to create your estate plan. Uh, all along, as soon as you build assets, you need to have the right beneficiaries. We get this question from, from time to time. When do I need a will? At, at what point? Well, as soon as you have uh, as soon as you have assets, something something to lose. And there's even some scary scenarios of what if you don't have assets, but you pass away where there's an, a lawsuit attached to it, maybe wrongful death, that sort of thing. If you don't have a will or some instructions there, then it gets you know wildly uh, tragic, yes, always, but wildly financially complicated. And so so it's it's hard to say exactly for every situation when you need a will, but typically it's when you start having assets and building up assets. Well, if those assets are in retirement plans and whatnot, you can assign beneficiaries to those. So then beyond that, if you just continue to kind of peel back the layers of, well, when do I need a formal estate plan? A lot of times that next sort of landmark is, well, when I get married, and really, I would argue that especially when you have kids, that's when you really do need, need, need an estate plan set up. Will living will, powers of attorney, you know, uh, healthcare and, and durable powers of attorney. You need that structure set up as well as doing a full beneficiary audit to make sure that the assets that you own are, are owned and titled correctly and the beneficiaries are all listed correctly so you're avoiding probate as much as possible. In your 30s is likely when, you're, when your overall life is sort of stable enough that you need to get that estate plan in place if you don't have it in place already. And then every three to five years, you're gonna to wanna to tune into it to make sure that it's still appropriate. Will things change every three to five years? No, no, but you're gonna to wanna to tune in to make sure nothing has changed. All right, so, so there it is. In, in your 30s, what are your big financial priorities? Still habit forming stage, very challenging sort of tug of war financially sort of time, planning and making big decisions for your future while also dealing financially with some of the past. And the big, big decisions you need to make is, you know, how much, how much debt, long-term debt, do you invite into your life? That's a crucial, crucial decision. Start doing tax planning and build that estate plan, estate plan for the first time. Work with your certified financial planner on that. They've got to, you've got to make sure that they're doing comprehensive financial planning, looking at all six areas of your financial life, because each of those three priorities, they are squarely centered in in one of the six areas of financial planning, but there's more. There's more than just three priorities when you're in your 30s or really at any decade. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, cohorn.com. That's cohorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or send us an email, info at cohorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.